Returning to one of our top stories, and the military is expanding its ground operations on the Gaza Strip by launching an unprecedented bombardment on Hamas. Well, joining me live is Dr Malcolm Davis, Senior Analyst at the Australian Strategic Policy Institute. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us. Is what we're seeing the start of a ground offensive? I think today's uh, operations where you've seen greatly intensified artillery and air bombardment of Gaza is probably the early stages of that ground offensive. We, well, the, the Israelis haven't gone in on the ground in force yet, but they have been moving forces forward. And what you're seeing is the Israelis shaping the battle space, uh, attacking key known locations of Hamas uh, defensive strong strength with those uh, air and artillery strikes so that when the Israeli ground forces go in, they have an easier time of, of actually penetrating those defences more rapidly than what would be the case if, you know, there was no such attacks in the first place. The IDF uh, had a recent post a couple of hours ago and it reads, 36 years of Hamas terrorising Israel is more than enough. How prepared do you think the IDF are on taking on Hamas? We've seen the preparation for what they did on October 7. What do you think they're in for? Look, I think the Israelis are, are as prepared as they're going to be. Uh, you know, they're quite right. Uh, Hamas have been seeking to destroy Israel for many decades. You know, when Palestinian supporters sing these words of, you know, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, that's actually about the destruction of Israel and the elimination of the Jewish state. And Hamas is at the tip of the spear of that. So the Israeli Defence Force does need to go in and decisively defeat Hamas. The challenge the Israelis have is that to go in and achieve that will require a great deal of effort on the ground in a highly dense urban environment, which has been uh, defended by Hamas. And the, the Hamas terrorists have had a long time prepared defences, including you know, snipers, uh, IEDs, booby traps, mines and so forth. So the Israelis in going house to house, street to street, are going to face heavy casualties as they go in, as well as trying to avoid inflicting civilian deaths uh, uh, wherever possible. Yeah, certainly a concern with, you know, a lot of humanitarian organisations, of course, other people talking about the uh, the crisis there in Gaza and they're suspecting, you know, potentially more than one million children's lives, nearly half of the 2.3 million population of Gaza on the line there. Um, how difficult is this situation? Because we know under international law, uh, Israel has the right to defend, but unfortunately we are going to hear more civilians are going to lose their lives. Israel does have the right to defend itself, and if it does nothing, then Hamas will do what it did on October the 7th again and again and again. And so I think this is a key point. Um, you know, Israel must go in, it must defeat Hamas, but at the same time, it must do so in a way that avoids needless civilian casualties. That's going to be the real challenge, because at the end of the day, once Hamas is defeated, Israel does need to win the peace. It does need to sit down and work with the Palestinian people and try and work out an equitable solution to their future uh, that also uh, takes into account Israel's needs for security. Uh, and the challenge, of course, is that this is not just about Hamas in, in uh, Gaza. We also face the prospect that this war could escalate rapidly, bringing in Hezbollah in the north and also Iran. And so the potential for this war to rapidly spill out of control, to escalate rapidly across the region, I think is very real. And so it's it's a very complex situation with no guarantee of success at the end of the day. But the one guarantee is that there will unfortunately be heavy loss of life on all sides. So what are your thoughts on if Israel defeats Hamas? What about their ideology and other military organisations like the Lion's Den, PIJ, and of course what you mentioned with Hezbollah and in Iran? Well, I think, you know, those militant groups do need to be defeated at the same time. It's not just about Hamas. Um, Hezbollah is, is more challenging because it's a much larger organisation. It has much greater um, firepower than Hamas in terms of battlefield rockets that can uh, range across Israel. And then, of course, you have Iran, uh, which is the puppeteer, the puppet master for all of these organisations. It is Iran that is funding these organisations, that is equipping them, that is training them, and that is coordinating them. 
And so Iran is at the is at the top of the pyramid in that sense. And essentially, Israel does have to defeat Iran somehow and prevent them from essentially reconstituting these organizations uh, in the future. Challenge there, of course, is that one of the quickest ways to see uh, new terrorist groups or, uh, spring up after Hamas is destroyed is if the Palestinian people are radicalized uh, by seeing large numbers of their citizens killed in this coming conflict. So Israel faces a dilemma of, of extraordinary proportions in terms of how it's going to win this war, but also win the peace at the same time. And what are your thoughts on what is going to happen? We're hearing a lot of tunnels. Uh, it'll be, you know, a huge effort for the IDF, hundreds and thousands of them. Well, we just heard uh, Sky's Deborah Hain reporting that Israel plans to do this war differently than what they've done before with Hamas. Uh, what do you make of that comment? I think what she's referring to there is that this will be a much more intense, prolonged battle. In the past, what you've seen uh, with Israel Defence Force operations against Hamas is what's known as mowing the lawn, uh, where they go in on a limited raid, they do some airstrikes, they do some artillery firing, and then they withdraw. And Hamas is still left intact, uh, battered but intact. I think this time, what you will see is essentially go Israel going in and ripping apart Hamas, destroying them decisively down to the last man and certainly destroying their leadership, destroying their logistics, destroying their weapons. And so in the end, what you have is the destruction of Hamas. And I think it can be compared in some respects to 1945 and, and the destruction of, of, of Nazi um, forces in Germany. Ultimately, this is what needs to happen, is that Hamas is decisively defeated and utterly destroyed. But then the challenge is, how do you win the peace? How do you ensure that another type of Hamas-type organisation just doesn't come along to fill the vacuum. Of course, we're seeing the absolute devastation, the loss of civilian lives in Gaza. The people in, living in Israel are living on edge. They're anxious there, living in bomb shelters, seeing rockets and so forth flying across. What sort of circumstances are they going to be in for and what do we need to look out for for the people in Israel during this conflict? Look, I think the people of Israel quite rightly are concerned about how this conflict ends because, as I said earlier, um, groups like Hamas and Islamic Jihad and Hezbollah seek the destruction of the Jewish state. They seek the destruction of Israel and the elimination of the Jewish people. Uh, and for the Israeli people, that's you know the end. They can't accept a second Holocaust. So I think that the Israeli people will be very focused on ensuring that this war is successful uh, in the sense of destroying uh, groups like Hamas. Um, but they will certainly be worried about the potential for uh, these uh, the enemies to be able to retaliate. And you know, here I think probably the biggest concern would have to be Hezbollah, its ability from the north to fire large numbers of rockets and missiles against the length and breadth of uh, Israel, including into Jerusalem. Uh, and the ability of the Israeli defences, uh, including Iron Dome, for example, to counter those threats. And the other big concern, I think, for the Israelis would be Iran. Uh, will Iran do something uh, truly um, uh, devastating in terms of its potential to attack Israel? Uh, I'm not sure exactly where that leads, but I think it must be a concern for both the Israeli government and the Israeli people about the, about the potential for Iran to enter this war. We do have to wrap it up, but finally, um, Dr Malcolm Davis, in your opinion and in your expertise and time that you've been looking at uh, conflicts, can you describe how this conflict is compared to others? Look, I think this is one of the most serious ones for the simple reason of the potential for what's known as horizontal escalation, which is for the war to spread across the region uh, and bringing in other states and other actors. And also... This war has to be seen against a global context of increasing instability and the risk of major power war. We're already seeing conflict obviously happening in Ukraine. That potentially could continue to escalate. Uh, we're seeing increasing tensions in the South China Sea between China and countries like the Philippines. Potential for the US to become involved in this war, particularly if Iran gets involved, uh, could then open up opportunities where US adversaries like uh, Russia and China could seek to exploit the situation. So there is a real risk 
that this war could escalate across the region and potentially increase in international instability quite dramatically. Dr Malcolm Davis, always appreciate your time and expertise. Thank you so much. Thank you.